Hello and welcome to the Scrabble channel. Today, this is my $700 gaming PC. So, for $700, this is actually quite fast. I can guarantee you that this gaming PC will actually, as a matter of fact, run pretty much a lot of today's popular PC games older settings 1080p, which is pretty good for its price point. So anyways, to get straight into the build, for the processor, I chose the Core i3-4330. This is a dual core processor that is hyper-threaded and runs at 3.5GHz. Now do not underestimate this CPU whatsoever. This CPU, as a matter of fact, can achieve the same gaming performance as a regular i5 and i7 that have not been overclocked, which is very good for its really good price point of $125. But anyways, this is actually a very good gaming CPU that is very underrated, and really, for its price point, it beats out the FX6300 and G3258, so this is a great gaming processor to go with. So for the motherboard, I chose the MSI H81M P33 motherboard. This is a micro ATX motherboard by MSI and can support up to 16GB of RAM, which is good enough for gaming because really you only need 8GB of RAM, so do not, so pretty much do not underestimate the fact that this has 16GB of RAM. And this also has very good reviews online, as on Newegg.com, this currently has a 4 egg review rating with over 67 reviews, which is very good. And really, this is a really good motherboard for its price point. Just because it's low doesn't mean it's necessarily bad or anything. It really just means that it doesn't have as many of the nice features as, you know, a higher-end motherboard. But really, for having a locked processor and, you know, having only a single GPU setup, really this motherboard is quite fine. So for the RAM, I chose the ADATA XPG V1 8GB RAM set. So this is a dual channel RAM set by ADATA and I always choose this RAM set because one, I always recommend it for its price point. For $73, this is a very solid RAM set to go with if you're going to build your gaming PC for the first time or anything like that or if you're on a budget. And this also has, you know, as of course, 8GB of DDR3 RAM which is more than enough for gaming. And lastly, this RAM set also runs at 1600MHz which is pretty much standard for gaming. So for the hard drive, I chose the Western Digital Blue 1TB hard drive. So this is loved by PC gamers all around because it is very cheap, it's pretty reliable, and for its price point, it's actually pretty fast. It'll boot up Windows 8 at about 10 seconds actually because even I myself have hands-on experience with building my brother's gaming PC and booting up Windows 8 on it and it actually takes about 10 to 15 seconds which is actually really good. So for its price point of $55, this is a great hard drive to go with for this gaming PC. Now for the graphics card for this gaming PC, I chose a GTX 970 by Zotac. So for $330, you are getting the best bang for the buck GPU on the market right now. This GPU for its price point outperforms a GTX 780 and a R9 290, which is crazy for its price point. But really, some other really good features are in this GPU. It has 4GB of VRAM, which is more than enough for 1080p gaming. Two, it supports a lot of the new Maxwell features with the new Maxwell architecture on most NVIDIA GPUs. And also, this is at a pretty high clock speed and is completely overclockable thanks to the Zotac GPU cooler that's on this. And really, this is a very fast graphics card for its price point. And really, that's pretty much what makes this gaming PC very good for its $700 price point. So for the case, I chose the Antec 1 ATX Mint Tower Computer Case. So this is one of the better sub $50 cases you can get for a gaming PC because it's pretty cheap, it's pretty well built, it has USB 3.0 on the front of the case, and also this is a Antec 1 series case and those have had a lot of very positive reviews on Newegg.com and Tiger Direct and pretty much any other PC retailer website, so this is a pretty good case to go with. Now to finish up this build, for the power supply, I chose the Corsair CX500. And for you guys wondering, will 500 watts be enough to support a GTX 760 and the i3 in this build? Well, it is. As from NVIDIA's website, you can see that the GTX 970 requires a minimum power supply requirement of 500 watts, which is good, even better for this gaming PC because the processor in this build is not overclockable, which will, which will not add on any extra wattage to this PC. So really, 500 watts of power is enough for this gaming PC. Now, lastly, this power supply has 80 plus bronze, which is basically saying that this power supply will run at an efficient rate that is better than most other power supplies on most other PCs for the most part. And also, this is a Corsair power supply, which means that it is pretty well made. It actually has some pretty good, well-made 
parts in it for power supply for its price point and really for its $30 price point this is a no-brainer PSU to go with for this gaming PC so anyways I hope you guys enjoyed the video like favorite subscribe and all that good stuff and this is the Scaffold channel signing out